All right, everyone, welcome back to another edition of This is D-SPAN, the podcast. Special guest today, Lucas Shu joins us. Uh, Lucas, uh, how are we doing today? Doing good, doing good. Uh, so a little background how I met Lucas. So Lucas, I was trying to, th- or I, I don't what, what did I used to call you? Did I used to have a nickname when you were on our staff at Oshkosh West, or do we, I don't remember, it's been so long. You probably did, it's something like here, <laughs> something like that, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Lucas was on our uh, staff at uh, Oshkosh West for basketball, uh, but now he's. Uh, are you? You're still in college, right? Yeah, I'm still in college. Go to Fox Valley Tech right now. He's at Tech, but he's also uh, does a bunch of things for the NFL and some of the things with that. So why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about uh, all your different jobs you have currently? Yeah, so I'm in Tech, like I said, but uh, so I do some things so that do production for like ESPN, CBS, Fox Sports, so how to Lambo. Do more depression for them. I uh, work with uh, NFL Spins on a fan site. I'm a sports writer for them, football writer, a broad NFL writer. I uh, work with Pool People Focus, it's a part time job. So I'll charge stats for them, do all the live games for them, and do questions analysis. So you can see me and tell you, like whenever they post something on Twitter or Instagram or in the database for punters, kickers, special teams guys. I'll be, do, I'll be part of that grading system. I'll uh, work with the NBA and some of the stuff they do. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Like I said, I saw I just ran into you a few weeks ago, but I also saw you were updating your LinkedIn. So uh, you had something on Pro Football Focus for the Denver Broncos. So do you specifically, you said, kind of write for them, for that team? Yeah, so the Denver Broncos and the social media guys. So okay. Broncos, so like for all NFL teams, we have – Somebody assigned to them, so we have somebody assigned to the Chiefs, somebody assigned to the Packers, and what we do is we will go into the data we have at Pro Football Focus, which is a giant database, and with like right now for free agency signings, like the Broncos just signed uh, Graham Glasgow from the Lions in the uh, guard, and basically I'll tweet out some data we have for them, tweet out some grades and some analytics stats for them, and kind of focus on the Broncos and some of just looks in the Lions and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Why I wanted to bring you on today, and I told you before uh, we actually started recording that I want to get uh, Lucas back on for our NFL draft coverage, if and whenever that takes place. I know that's a wild time right now, Uh, but Mm -hmm. it's free agency week, and and with no sports going on, the NFL is the king right now for uh, sports news. Uh, so I want to run a few things past you and see where, where you're at and, and kind of where you're grading players and moves. Uh, we'll start with the Packers here. Uh, you know, two big signings uh, we had. Uh, Christian Kirksley was the first one. And then uh, we had Rick well, was Ricky Wagner, right, was the second one uh, this week or, or on Monday. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about those signings and, and how you feel about the Packers going forward with these two? Yeah, so I really, heading into this off season for free agency purposes as it is, I really was not expecting a whole lot in the Packers because of how much they spent last year for agency and of who's going to be able to this year's free agency. Because last year, Sam Preston Smith, Darius Smith, Adrian Amos, and Billy Turner. I loved three of those. I loved Amos and the, and the Smiths. I'm a big fan of Turner, but they spent a ton of money in free agency last year. They weren't going to have a lot coming into this year. And the money they did have coming this year, I was expecting them to put more to keep it for next year because you got Bakhtiari coming up in the free agency next year, who is one of the best left pass blocking left tackles in the NFL. Maybe the best pass blocking left tackle in the NFL, so another one to keep him around. Then you got Corey Lindsley coming up with a solid, solid center for the Packers. Yep. And you got Kenny Clark, one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. I wasn't expecting a lot, but I think what they did here was very smart in signing Ricky Wagner, who this past year didn't look great on the Lions. I watched him in his film in all 22. He looked okay, but he's been certainly better the past few, few years. Not as good a blogger as the last blogger, but he's a solid right tackle. He'll do, he'll do his job. Guys. He's not going to be outstanding. He's not going to be playing guys now. But he'll get the job done. Kurt C, not as high in him, but I still like the signing because of the first I was pretty upset because I'm like, Chris Creek's not that good, not very good in coverage, which the NFL now can be good in coverage as a yeah. linebacker because of how passive the game is. But I think when I was looking at the contract breakdown, it's very heavily incentive-based, very heavily gameplay-based because of how many injuries he's had. So I'm 
more happy with it and more okay with it. I think he's a solid player. I think the fact that he did this year mainly is just they didn't overpay the guy and they played it smart and played it for next year. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you know, Kurt, Kurtz has been hurt, you know, last year. I think well, he was hurt most of the season last year, right? Was that mm-hmm. – yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the two games. And, and, you know, Blake Martinez, even though he loads up on tackle numbers, I think we all saw as Packer fans or just in general that – he just he just isn't that quick and fast and 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 I think he got what did he get from the Giants three years thirty million, and I think he yeah, was yeah and he was looking for ten million a year so uh, losing him and you know if Kirksley can stay healthy and I think they're still gonna be looking for that kind of position in the draft as well. Um, uh, who else did the Packers bring back? Did they bring back Mercedes Lewis on a one year deal? I believe right. Yeah, they bring him back. It's a short deal. Just kind of guessing just a. To... Didn't play a position there. Yeah, and then they did tender uh, touchdown Jesus, uh, uh, Jake Kumrall, and well as uh, Lazard, which I think everybody was uh, hoping that they'd bring back. So uh, that's kind of what the Packers were doing for that. Uh, but I think you hit it right on the head. I think there's some big name players coming up, and I think you know Bakhtiari is going to be and Kenny Clark are both you know in their prime or coming into their prime, uh, especially for Kenny Clark that. Uh, I think we need to get him taken care of, or as Packer fans at least. Right. I mean, you got to see Mark next. I mean, back here, he's so good. Clark's so good. It wouldn't be worth it just to go and sign somebody decent for big money. Right. You have these guys come up for it. It's so good. Yeah, and I think uh, going forward, I think you're going to see a few smaller signings uh, for the Packers, but uh, I think. Uh, you know, getting. I think they obviously wanted these two guys pretty quickly, as fast as they acted on Monday. Uh, so I think they had those both Ricky and uh, uh, Kirksley high on their list. So that was the Packer talk on that. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy week. You know, Tom Brady, between Tom Brady and the coronavirus, I don't know well, if there's much else that's been talked about. Uh, yeah. but what what do you see here? On, you know, when you think football, you start on the quarterbacks. Uh, let's kind of go through some of these quarterback moves. I mean, Tom Brady... I think we all kind of saw that coming in Tampa Bay, so I don't know how much we want to dive into that. But uh, but the other big move yesterday was you know Jacksonville trading Nick Foles to Chicago. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on what the Bears are trying to do here? So Nick Foles, uh, I'm not a huge Nick Foles guy. He had a great one in the playoffs of the Eagles, obviously incredible one. But in Jacksonville, he kind of showed he had his injury early on, but he kind of showed. He's not really that guy. He's not the guy you saw in the playoffs of the Eagles. He's inaccurate sometimes. He kind of sort of just jump balls a lot of the time. He's an okay quarterback. I, I really don't know what you're getting out of Nick Foles in Chicago. He's okay at best, if that. I, I really don't know what they're doing here. I mean, I would have gone all in Cam Newton with them. I'm not even a big Cam Newton guy, but Cam Newton, even with his injuries, I, he's certainly way better than Nick Foles. I don't even know what they're going to do right now. Yeah, and, and to create, I don't know if you were tweeting this or somebody else saw it, but, you know, creating that quarterback competition, you know, with Mitch Trubisky, still a young quarterback, we saw what Mitch can do with his legs. He can do some things. It's like, well, I just don't see how this is going to work out for them. Yeah, I don't know. There's stories coming out from last year about Trubisky, like, and uh, Hallis Hall putting up all the TVs that said anything bad about him. And he's confident, a bunch of stuff, all his confidence is just shot. And they're bringing in a new guy to uh, compete with him. If you don't bring in a guy to compete with him, don't bring in a guy who is okay at best. Bring in a guy who's going right. to crush him and who's like elite level good, like a Cam Newton type who's just going to go, clearly show I'm way better than Trubisky. And bring in a guy who's like working Trubisky, and maybe can talk to him and stuff. I don't know what Trubisky got. I think he's not good at all. But Trubisky has some qualities where he has some nice throws. He's mobile. He can make great with his legs. But you can't, you can't bring a guy who's like his level, okay, and create as many controversy there. Right. A uh, few other things I want I had marked down. You know, the, the Raiders signed, uh, I think they signed Marcus Mariota, right? Do you think you see a quarterback competition in, in Las Vegas for those two? Yeah, I mean... I think Derek Carr is slightly better than Mariota is. Mariota, he coming out of college, was really nice. But I I think Derek Carr is going to win that competition. But I think 
I don't know. Maybe there's another full twisty thing, not confidence wise, but I think it's another situation where it's like both these guys are in the same ballpark, I'd say. I think Carr is better, but I really don't know what to do with Mayock. He's just kind of signing a guy. I think Gruden and Mayock are signing a guy just to sign a guy at most, bring him in. If Carr plays bad, his next year, Tony Mario, like almost a Right. Um, you know, kind of going off that too with the uh, Chargers, looks like they're going to roll with Tyrod Taylor and then uh, Rivers signing in Indianapolis. What are your some thoughts on those two uh, signings and then Chargers sticking with Taylor? I mean, I like, I like Tyrod. I like him. I think he's an okay quarterback. He's given some weapons, which they have in Keenan Allen, like Williams. I think he can be, be a solid quarterback. I think he can win with Tyrod. I think Phil Rivers right now is about to be. But, I mean, I think Tyrod Taylor would do enough for the Chargers to win games. I think he's going to play exceptionally well in the dominant game. I think he'll do enough for what he has and what's going on around him, what Bruins around him. Yeah. And so, Bruins, I think, I think he's a good thing. I like the time for one year to know him and the head coach, that guy's head coach right now. They have experience together. He's got T.Y. Hilton. He's got a great offensive line there. I think he'll be good. I think he's better than he was in L.A. But I think it's a, I think it's a nice one to deal for the Colts as well. Because you can still out and go draft somebody, play behind Rivers, learn from Rivers, and if Rivers decides to retire or leave, or if you just want to get rid of him, you can bring in that rookie guy from the year before. Yeah, I, I agree with it, and 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 you know, kind of going on Indy. What what do you see with Brissett? You think they're going to try to move him? Uh, is is going back to New England a possibility, or, or what do you kind of see with him? Yeah, I think it's certainly a possibility to move Brissett to New England. I think it's a possibility to move him anywhere. I mean, last year he was like the epitome of like me. Okay, I guess. I mean, he had an offensive line. He had some weapons in Hilton, Ebron. And another person, Ray Camp, like I think, who had a nice season. Yep. And he didn't really do anything with it. He was super conservative. He was okay, he, but he had like such a low amount of yards in this modern NFL. And I know yards can be a deceiving stat, but he just didn't do anything. He showed that like, he's not going to be your leading guy if you want to win games in the NFL. Yeah. Um, anything else from quarterbacks that you kind of want to dive in on? I know, like I said, this week's kind of been more of the free agency top, but I want to, you know, co- the team starts with the quarterback, so I wanted to hit on those guys yep. first. Uh, just a second on Brady. I just think it's going to be interesting in Tampa Bay because of how Bruce Arians and his is very vertical and very downfield based, and I'm really interested to see how Brady's arms can handle with yeah. that deep down passing offense. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, Mike Evans is, is definitely a deep, you know, down the field threat. And, you know, Brady is 42. Uh, I don't think we saw a lot of arm strength out of him last year. Uh, right. It's going to be interesting. Um, but going forward, uh, what were some of your favorite uh, signings so far? Favorite one, my favorite one, first of all, Chris Harris back to the Chargers. Chris Harris Jr. to the Chargers, $10 million, two years, I believe it was. And somebody else got like an eleven like a twelve million dollar deal. I'm like I don't know how that happens, but you're back to Troy Wayne. But yep. Chris Harris is junior for the Chargers. That defense in the secondary is stacked. You get Chris Harris Jr., still probably a lead quarterback for another year or two. It's not elite, still good. Then you got Derwin James at safety, you got Casey Hayward in, at the other side of the corner, and you got Desmond King in the slot. And you got this year Adley, who did last year, who I love coming out of the draft. Yep, super me too. rangy, super fast. Yep. This secondary in San Diego, San Diego, LA is loaded. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, I loved Adderley coming out last year, too. And, you know, a healthy James uh, going into next year is going to be absolutely huge for, for that team. Yeah. Another big sign I liked was uh, Raiders, Corey Littleton. Yep. Corey Littleton is. I don't know what he does if people don't recognize him. If they don't like him, he's not a great at run stopping, but he's so good at pass coverage as a linebacker, which in the NFL today is so valuable. He got twelve million for like twelve million per year for three years, so like thirty six million, I think. Thirty six million for three years. 
And you look at it compared to other guys. You've got Blake Martinez, who got like 30 for three. And I rotate, I didn't think quite little ten every day of the week for 36 minutes for three years over Blake Martinez. Just for the fact, Corey Littleton is so good at coverage. He can shut down tight ends, he can shut down running backs. He just holds so valuable out there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, Littleton, for, for fantasy players, like if you played a defensive player, he was just a machine, tackling machine. But he also got, you know, he could intercept balls. He could have, uh, you know, sacks. Uh, he, I really liked him. I know he was high in the Packers' radar. Uh, but, uh, you know, them signing Kirksey kind of, I think, ended that pretty quickly. But uh, I agree. I like that signing. Uh, I think the Raiders signed the Bears linebacker too. Didn't they sign, uh, I can't remember his name, Oh, uh, Nick Kwiatkowski. Yeah, and I think he was kind of on the Packers' radar as a low-level free agent. Uh, so I, I think the Raiders are on the right track, uh, you know, defensively, but, you know, it's all going to come down to their quarterback play as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other likes yeah. Any other likes that you had, whether they're, uh, you know, bigger or smaller uh, signings? Uh, I love Kenzie Alexander to the Bengals. He's a slot corner. He, got, he signed him for $4 million, which is today's NFL. He signed him a slot corner for four million. Pretty cheap and yeah. <laughs> a good deal. Right, I agree. Um, we'll just kind of dive into what what what's some of the worst signings, and I, I we can talk about the DeAndre Hopkins trade in this too. But uh, what were some of your actually worst uh, signings that you just either whether it was value, poor fit for a team, or or what do you think? All right, so the signing. So I know a lot of teams are super high in Austin Hooper coming into the free agency. For whatever reason, I didn't understand it. I mean, I, I got why they liked him because of the you know, tight end, a lot of receptions, a lot of yards, a lot of production. Looks good with Atlanta. Yeah. But when I watched the film and watched what he did in Atlanta, it wasn't like it wasn't like he's Travis Kelsey or Chris Kittle. I just think most of them talking about him that way, but they're comparing him like, oh, such a good playmaker. He's crazy at the catch. And like when I watched him, he's not like doing that. He catches the ball. He gets a little bit. He does enough and he gets tackled. But Julio Jones was drawing so much attention. Mohamed Sanu, he was there getting so much attention. Calvin Ridley was there getting so much attention. And Hooper was the odd man out. He was getting these nice matchups. He's a customer with them. So it wasn't like he was this great tight end. He's good. But with the Browns paid him, it was like the highest tight end in NFL money. I didn't really get that at all. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of. I I don't think I'm so much surprised that he got that amount of money with the you know with the cap raise that's coming and all that, but. I just yeah. the Browns is a goofy fit for me. Like you know, may, and maybe I'll be wrong. I don't know, but you know, we didn't see a lot of that Browns offense was wasn't all that great. You know, it started with Baker Mayfield and you know with OBJ, and uh, you know I thought Landry had a pretty nice season and Joku was hurt some of the time. I mean, they had a great running back tandem. Uh, you know, with the uh, with the two Hunt and uh, who's the other guy? <laughs> I always, Chubb? yeah Chubb. No, nah, I kept thinking Carlos yeah. Hyde. But yeah, Nick Chubb. I mean, they have weapons offensively, uh, so we'll see. It's an interesting fit. But you know, that name came up a lot for the Packers uh, when I saw the amount of money. Uh, I think I was fine with him signing elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of not a tight end log jam, and proving somebody has got to go. <laughs> Just yeah. tight ends there on that roster. Right. I think someone's bound to get traded out of there. Right. Uh, what 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 uh, was another one that you hated? Because I know you had I know you're and we'll get to the end when we wrap this up. But uh, Lucas is pretty active on his Twitter, which is good because he has a lot of great insight and he follows a lot of the correct people with uh, retweets. So uh, why don't you get in with one of your other uh, bad poor signings? Yeah. So another one was uh, Big V holy by time. I don't know what I did, but he was the Austin to tackle from the Eagles a lion sign. Yeah. And. This, look, this sign must be a little worse when you compare it to the other one. Because there's a couple of that. Well, I like a lot. The signing for the Chargers. You have to tackle need. Sign up for good money, like $10 million per year. But then Vitae, who barely played at all for the Eagles, said he would have lost his job to Andre Dillard and uh, Peter's got hurt. Vitae is not a good tackle. He was average at his best, at his peak. But he got signed for $10 million dollars. For a per year, for five years, a fifty million dollar contract to the Lions. I have no idea what they're doing there with that contract. That makes literally no sense to me. He didn't play a lot. When he did play, he didn't look that good. And he signed him to fifty million dollars for five years. And he took on on Sambalaga for three years, thirty million. 
mean, it just looks terrible in comparison too. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen that name come up a few times. And like I said, I don't go in depth into some of these as much as you do. So you kind of, you, you know, of, of, you know, the analytics and the statistics, but um, yep. when I saw that there was a poor signing throughout a lot of the major people that I follow, um, I figured uh, that that was a, uh, not a great one, <laughs> especially at that kind of money, um, you know, kind of wrapping it up before we end uh, the DeAndre Hopkins trade. I mean, just an incredible uh, turn of events, I would say. Uh, what, you know, I think originally it came out, it was David Johnson to the Texans, which I could see. I think then, you know, whether whether you like David Johnson or not with his production and his injury history, um, you're, you're giving it back into Houston, maybe a little recharge up. But then to see the return, uh, just incredible. What what are your, some of your thoughts on that? So, I think Bill O'Brien, to put it nicely, is one of the worst traders GM, sort of, you know, the worst job is there besides coach. In my recent history, like, this trade is awful. DeAndre Hopkins in a fourth round went to the Cardinals, and then the Texans got a second round pick, I believe, this year, and a fourth round next year for and David Johnson. In the NFL, the receiver matters so much more than a running back does. Yeah. Especially in how pass heavy everything is. And there's so much more. And for David, for any way to David Johnson, in running back position overall, really doesn't matter in the running game. Because if you give a running back a great offensive line, it does not matter who their neck is. You saw him down at the line, though. He got hurt. Uh, and for more, it's like good. And okay, they, they look good because of how good the offensive line is and how dominant they were and how they got great trading in the run game. You see it in San Francisco with how good their pass run blocking is and how good it got schemed up and how good the play design was for the running back. Yeah. The running back doesn't really matter a whole lot to the run game. And I think the Texans think, oh, it does matter. When in reality, in analytics, it does not matter. And then to add on, you give rid of one of the best receivers in the NFL. Yeah, he had a slightly worse year than he did in 2019, 2018. But that year before was so goddamn good. You can't keep that up. I really don't get this trade at all from the Texans' perspective. Ex- because, right, especially but, that the Texans have a big time quarterback. That was my biggest thing. Like sometimes but, you see teams like, that have mediocre quarterbacks, like an Andy Dalton with AJ Green. Like I can see that, but this is like you got a young Deshaun Watson, and I don't know. I mean, Bill, he might have just sealed his fate because I, I can tell you what that was an absolute steal for the Cardinals to get DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, absolutely. You have. Kingsbury's offense, who is heavy, heavy wide receiver based, with very little tight ends and very little running backs, and you go get him a elite level receiver with a young rookie quarterback, former rookie quarterback, now sophomore quarterback, and Kyler Murray. That's insanity. How is you give him uh, Hopkins, Hazard, Fitzgerald, and he didn't get his first round pick, which is like an eighth or ninth overall pick. Right. He can go and get another receiver if he wanted to, but CD Lamb or Jerry Judy. Right. I know it's just crazy. I mean, I could, I could not. I think we were all shocked at at what came about of that. Uh, was there any other trades? I know the the Stefan Diggs trade. We can kind of touch into that. I to me personally, I mean, I'm as a Packer fan, happy that he's out of the NFC North. Um, I think it's a interesting fit in Buffalo. I think Buffalo needed a big time playmaker. Uh, what are your thoughts on that trade? Yeah, I this trade, I like it. I like overall before I say anything. I like it. But it's interesting because the Josh Allen situation in Buffalo is a really weird one because I think people are giving the Bills, not, they're not giving the Bills too much credit, they're giving I think, Josh Allen too much credit because of how good the Bills and the team are doing. Mm-hmm. You look at Josh Allen, and I think he's the same guy that he was in college, I ever thought he was going to be. So a lot of these people who are criticized him think he's going to be at least. He has a great can for an arm. Super mobile, super big, super strong. But when you watch him downfield and throw the ball downfield, people would think, oh, he's got a big arm. He can throw downfield and hit guys downfield. So they got John Brown. Right. And John Brown, he was great last year. Beating guys downfield, getting the safety downfield, finding gaps downfield. But John Brown wasn't really hitting him at all. <laughs> he's kind of like 10 yards. He's kind of like 10 yards ahead of him. He's kind of like 8 yards to his left. He wasn't hitting him. And he was going to put him in a slot target. And then you get Stephon Diggs. And I think Stephon Diggs is a great receiver. He's like a top 10, 
top 15 receiver in the NFL. Really, really, really good receiver. Really good real number. Really good in intermediate routes. But I think the problem is with this. If Josh Allen can't hit these guys, it doesn't matter. But I think it will certainly help Josh Allen because of how open he can get. It's just going to be an interesting situation to see what plays out with Buffalo. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, anything else you want to touch on before we wrap up? Uh, one last thing I talked earlier here, Tyler, is about the rumor to get traded. Whoever trades for him, if you do trade for him, do not give him a lot because of what I touched on already. He's a running back. Not a lot of value in a running back. Just be extremely careful with Todd Gurley. Would you, would, you, would you rank Melvin Gordon over Todd Gurley if teams are looking for a running back? Probably. I think that's a toss-up I mean, to me. What's up? I think it's almost a toss-up. I mean, depending on the price and value of what you get for either one. Right. I, I think Melvin Gordon's washed, too, to be honest with you. I, I really, it really depends on, I know Melvin Gordon wants a lot of money. Yeah, that's why yeah exactly. I LA didn't want to sign him. But you got to be careful. It depends on how much you're paying these guys. If you pay Melvin Gordon, like, $6 million per year, which I know will not happen, yeah. then sure, it's a good deal. But it all depends on how much you're getting for him and what you're paying him for him. What you I agree. Well, Lucas, I really appreciate you coming on. And, and like I said, we kind of just set this up real quick this week for a little like free agency pod, but we're definitely going to have you back on for the NFL draft. Yep. Um, we do have a listener question for you. Uh, if you didn't know, okay. it's from uh, coach Boyce. Oh boy. And he asked you, uh, Lucas, do you remember when you broke the washing machine at Oshkosh West? Hey, I still say I did not break that washing machine. I walked into that giant thing, and it was like locked already. I did not touch that. I think really, Tanner broke it. Yeah, yeah, it could have been Tanner. This, so for our listeners, this is one of our favorite stories. So we were, you know, at practice, and of course, uh, we were, you know, watching washing some laundry, doing it there. It was a, it was a lighter practice too. So uh, mm-hmm. I remember you coming out and then letting us know that the washing machine was broke. Uh, so we went in there, and when we went in there, what was it? It was jammed, right? We couldn't get the door open, right? <laughs> yeah, there's like some metal latch on it. So <laughs> yeah. It's like this big, giant, industrial washing machine. Yeah, well. There's like some giant latch on it so it doesn't break, and the latch wouldn't come off. Right, and so I went in to see it, and it was like, oh, man. So then we went out and told the other coaches, uh, but he, that was his uh, story for you. So we got to get a laugh. Good good old times over at Oshkosh West. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but for my listeners, uh, why don't you go ahead and you can plug anything you want. If you have your social media, uh, any of your articles you can find, or if you have a podcast, uh, go ahead and plug whatever you want here. It's, it's your table. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I used to have a podcast. I would love to follow me on Twitter at LucasHu2, L-U-C-A-S-H-U-S-C-H-U-H-2, and number two. Okay. Double underscore of you, LucasHu2, number two. Um, you can go, uh, go on, uh, fan side, go to the NFL speed zone page. So it's just NFL content in general. You can go find me on there. I'm running a bunch of articles in there. Currently it's mainly really, really, really draft heavy. A lot of mock drafts I'm putting out. One's coming out in a day or two with Carolina Panthers. Um, I think that's the main stuff I want to hit on. Oh, would you like mock drafts? If you like just mock drafts in general or like, Drafting in general. Yep. Go to the mock draft database. Okay. It's this guy I know, Denny. Really smart guy. Got some really cool products on there. Got some really cool tools on there for mock drafts. Yeah, we got to, I mean, you know, today was supposed to be the start of the NCAA tournament, so there's no way in hell, if there wasn't this virus going through, that we would be doing this podcast during the NCAA tournament. But look at us. Here we are. Yeah. Uh, here we are today. But uh, really appreciate you coming on. And like I said, uh, follow him. He's got. A lot of good content, especially NFL draft, and and we'll definitely have you back on uh, closer to draft time. Thank you. All right, buddy. We'll have a good rest of the day, and we will talk to you later. Thank you. You Have a good one.